and welcome to this short presentation exploring the development of science fiction. According to the Oxford Concise Dictionary of Literary Terms, science fiction is a popular modern branch of prose fiction that explores the probable consequences of some improbable or impossible transformation of the basic conditions of human or intelligent non-human existence. Science fiction is a form of literary fantasy or romance that often draws upon earlier kinds of utopian and apocalyptic writing. In other words, science fiction is one medium for the telling of new folk tales and the playing of imaginative games. We can look at how science fiction evolved in order to better understand how it is utilised by writers today. Brian W. Aldiss argues that Mary Shelley's Frankenstein or the modern Prometheus is a convenient starting point for the text which can be fruitfully considered within the science fiction canon. This may indeed be a convenient starting point, However, its roots can be traced further back to the 17th century, if we are so inclined, where writers began producing something we call speculative fiction. Often stories concerned with discoveries and technology that science might bring about. This type of fiction is largely seen in the imaginary voyage, such as the utopian fantasy of Francis Bacon's New Atlantis. Baconian optimism prompted a backlash of hostility from those who perceived a threat to religious values in the materialistic encouragements of technology. And this is where we begin to see tensions developing between the then fundamental and dominant philosophy of religion and new discoveries articulated in fiction that today we would find in a bookshop's science fiction section. In 1634, Johannes Kepler was the first person to couch an earliest scientific argument as a visionary fantasy with his book Somnium. In the 1800s, Mary Shelley was able to draw upon the prevailing fascination with new scientific discoveries. However, according to Brian Stableford, Frankenstein is firmly rooted within the tradition of anti-science fiction. The Frankenstein formula, that the created leads to the creator's downfall, was established in the 19th century as the principal narrative form of anti-science fiction something that does not form a positive progress. Anthony Burgess argues that positivism is the basic premise of science fiction. He says that without positivism, there would be no Mill, Darwin, Spencer, Engels or Marx, and in literature, genuine or sub, no science fiction, certainly no Jules Verne or H.G. Wells. The introduction of Vernian fiction into America eventually led to the hybridization of inventive fiction and Westerns which we are still primarily aware of today. This emphasises the importance of the myth of the frontier to American attitudes towards technological advances, that the unknown can be tamed with technology and the destruction of others. Star Trek popularised the idea that technology leads to the positive inclusion of others in a great and worthy federation of planets. Other science fiction that we find in space and later versions of Star Trek, such as Deep Space Nine, tends more towards the loss of individual freedom that is associated with governing bodies. Today, much science fiction is pitted not against political governance, but corporation. H.G. Wells opened up the future to serious speculative scrutiny with The Time Machine, effectively providing us with this narrative device. He also employed the anti-gravity technology of Cavorite in The First Men in the Moon. Wells didn't invent any significant facilitating device after 1901, but his contribution to science fiction has been almost unparalleled. He focused attention on the challenges opened up by using new technology, and popularised a fiction which, while using realism as its tools, trafficked in unreality. His work was well received, particularly by the technician and engineer class, who had formed the originators and readers of science fiction magazines. If there was one symptom which marked this body of writing off from less commercial kinds, it was the emphasis on plot at the expense of character and scene, the anxiety to press on with the story without embodying it convincingly in the scenes with further action and meaning remains typical of the lower orders of science fiction to this day. British scientific speculation had made its home in future war stories, made popular by George T. Chesney's The Battle of Dorking. However, the First World War brought a halt to this kind of story, and therefore to scientific speculation within Europe. As the USA came late to World War I and the battlefields were distanced from American experience, speculative fiction was not as interrupted, 
So America led the way in the magazine era, initially with Pulp Fiction. Ray Cummings pioneered the microcosmic romance in the hybrid Wells Boys pastiche, The Girl in the Golden Atom. And Ralph Milne Darley's The Radio Man extended the notion of radio to include matter transmission. However, once the preliminary journeys were made, pulp fantasies of this sort became stereotyped costume dramas. Nevertheless, in these readily available and easily produced serialisations, American science fiction fused European scientific romance and American otherworldly exotica with scientific miracle making, and here modern science fiction began anew. The magazine era took hold from 1926 to 1960. Hugo Gernsback's Amazing Stories was founded in 1926. The magazines shaped the genre, as did their cycles of boom and bust. Amazing was the first to limit its contents to fictional stories of scientific extrapolation and outer space adventure, and to try and define the genre. Gernsback initially called it scientification, and eventually coined the term science fiction in 1929. By praising and reprinting writers such as Verne, Wells and Puddy, Gernsback made them science fiction writers after the fact. As Gernsback envisaged it, science fiction was primarily a teaching tool, but one that did not make its teaching obvious. So, science fiction was scientific content slipped into fiction as a teaching tool. Arguably, the genre has since become much more sophisticated. The science fiction of the 1960s was characterised by a new wave of writers experimenting with various literary techniques and new ideas. They placed a greater emphasis on style with more in-depth methods of storytelling. The new wave writers included Samuel R. Delaney, Ursula K. Le Guin, Norman Spinrad, Theodore Sturgeon, John Bruner and J.G. Ballard. More sophisticated films were also released, like 2001 A Space Odyssey and Soylent Green. It is around the 60s and 70s that we saw more of that split between soft science fiction and hard science fiction. Hard science fiction emphasises scientific, technical detail and accuracy. The term was first seen in print in 1957. Soft science fiction is not based on engineering or the hard sciences, but is more focused on the soft sciences, such as anthropology, sociology, psychology and political science. In the 1980s, the genre was in danger of becoming obsolete as technology caught up to fiction. Thankfully, William Gibson moved science fiction from outer space to cyberspace with his novel Neuromancer. And since this dawn of cyberpunk, science fiction has continued to explore the tension between meat versus mind. I hope you have found this short introduction to the development of science fiction useful. Thanks for listening and always remember... Will you take the red pill or the blue pill?